Okay, so in this uh, short video, we're going to talk about the uh, pointers, which is a very important concept. If you're coming from Java or Python, you probably haven't been exposed to this idea of a pointer. The pointer is essentially an address in the memory location. Now, understanding pointers gives us a very efficient way to program things, and uh, it's also very important for, to, uh, for all C programmers for efficiency purposes and all the other uh, things. Uh, so what is a pointer? The pointer is essentially an address in the memory. So if you think about the memory, memory has addresses. So let's assume that I'm counting by fours here. So I have 0, 0, 4, 0, 8, and then 12 would be uh, 0, A, B, C, and, and so on. So if you're counting addresses, so you can think of point as an address in the memory, and the pointer type T is defined by T star in C naught. So for example, if you type something like this, if you define a pointer to be a pointer to an integer, essentially what we are saying is that pointer is a variable that can hold an address of an integer. So that's an address of an integer. Now, it doesn't give you an integer yet. It does have an address of an integer so that we can refer to the integer indirectly. Now, in order to allocate memory for the integer, you have to use the function alloc. So, for example, you can call alloc, you pass a type into alloc, and then what alloc does is to return some value. So, for example, alloc will return the, a pointer where four bytes of memory is allocated. So, what you can do now is you can assign the pointer to this alloc int. So, the allocate returns a pointer, a pointer to a memory, alloc allocates memory, and it gives you a pointer to the memory. And the memory comes from heap. We'll talk about those things in, in the lecture. So heap is a place where dynamic memory is allocated and deallocated. So the memory memory comes from the heap, and it's initialized. It's uh, allocated to the, it's given to the pointer. So for example, if the point is a variable, which lives somewhere here, and if alloc returns some address like hexadecimal 08, which means the four bytes given here, then you would get a pointer to that place. All right, now in order to initialize that uh, space that we just got, we can try to dereference the pointer. So for example, if you say star PTR is equal to 10, the effect of that statement is going to be that the value 10 is going to be written written to these four bytes of memory. So you're copying the bit pattern of 10 into these four bytes of memory. Now there's a special pointer type called null, which is of type T star. You cannot dereference null. For instance, if you assume that you're going to define a pointer, now for the most part, you should always make it a practice to assign null to a pointer if you don't have a memory allocated yet. And then if you try to dereference a pointer like this, this would cause what's called a runtime exception, and it will terminate the program. So it's a good contract to write to make sure that before you dereference any pointer, you must have a pointer that is not equal to null. Now in C naught, we have what's called the small types and large types. The small types in C naught are integers and booleans and characters. And what we mean by small types is that can be stored in variables passed to and from functions. So when you write a function like maybe int uh, foo int x, so what we're doing here is we can return something here. So we are assigning, we can pass a small type called integer x to this function. Or we can return a small type from that function. On the other hand, the large types can only be stored in memory. In order to access them, we pass reference or pointers to them. So for example, if you have sort of like a structure, which we'll define in a little bit, that has two fields, integer and maybe another integer. And if you have a pointer to that, and that's what you would pass to a function in order to access the struct. 
because the struct is a large data type. You don't want to copy this data into the runtime stack, and therefore you just pass a pointer to it. So that makes it more efficient to access the content associated with that pointer. Now defining a pointer or declaring a pointer would be something like this. So I can define a pointer to an integer and I can initialize that to null. Or I can define a pointer to a character. I can initialize that to null. Now notice that the star can be written anywhere between the type and the variable name. And C and C note will both treat this as a pointer to something, some type. And so defining a pointer is fairly straightforward. Now, what we are saying is sort of like you can define a pointer of any type. In fact, the memory allocated for a pointer variable would be about, would be 32 bits or four bytes of memory. If you have an, a machine that works with an address space of, you know, 32 bits, the pointers can be 32 bits. And so in star or char star or any char star that you allocate will take a space of 40, 32 bits. The variable will take that. Now, allocating memory for the pointer, so for instance, if you have an integer pointer, you must allocate enough memory to hold an int. So the alloc will give you a way to allocate one int to this pointer. If you have a, a pointer char star, then we must allocate a character to uh, uh, allocate a type character. So you can assume that four bytes of memory allocated here and uh, one byte of memory allocated here, since characters are one byte, since the NC note, and, and so on. So depending on the size of the type, size of int or size of character, it will allocate enough memory for that pointer. Now, when you dereference the pointer, you can say star PTR, which points to where the uh, the location is, and then you can allocate 10. So if you take the whole sequence of allocating memory, so here we declare the variable PTR, we alloc some memory, enough to hold an integer, and uh, then we dereference the PTR and allocate that to 10. Now, keep in mind that if you didn't allocate before dereferencing, it would cause uh, some sort of a runtime error. So you have to make sure that alloc has been called before the star PTR is used. So the, the process, what happens here is the following. So there are a few things that are going on. First of all, you are defining a pointer variable. So we do know that every variable has some location associated with it. Now, since pointers are 32 bits in my machine that I'm assuming, that you will be assigned 32 bits of memory for to hold the pointer. Now, the alloc int will, is going to give you another four bytes of memory. Let's say that four bytes of memory come from FF. So it will start from FF and will have four bytes of memory. So alloc returns FF, which is assigned to PTR. So it, in fact, what we're doing is we are writing in that PTR location the FF, so giving us a pointer to that FF. Now, when we talk about star PTR, what we're doing is we are taking the location pointed to by the pointer, which is FF, and dereference that and write 10 into these four bytes. So that's the process. So the PTR is an indirect reference to a location where you can hold an integer. And you will see the advantage of having a concept like this in terms of defining list and other kinds of structures. Now, list and pointers are going to be important. The reason we are learning pointers is that allows us to define what we call list or what we call linked list. Now, the list in the last lecture, we will talk about the list in more general, but one of the lists you already know is the array. Array is a list, an array is a contiguous list. If you take an array, you have to have a contiguous block of memory allocated for the array. Now that can be very demanding uh, uh, for on the compiler to find such a large block, if it's a large block. On the other hand, sometimes you can assign an array 
that's not enough or you can assign an array that's just too much and you waste a lot of memory so one of the ways to deal with list that changes a lot is to think about list as a collection of nodes like this that are connected by pointers so in other words we create some sort of a structure where you can hold some data and a pointer to some next node so for example this node has the address ff we can find a way to put the ff in here and if you have the address bf here if you can find a way to put the bf here if you have the address cf here if you can find a way to put the cf here and then finally this is going to null will give us a way to define a linked list without really the requirement that all this memory has to come from one place so the nice thing about this whole thing is that your ff block may come from here and your cf block may come from here and maybe your bf block will come from here maybe we can call this af maybe your af block will come from here so they come from wherever the memory is available on the heap we'll talk about the heap in more detail but the heap is a location in the memory that allows you to manage the dynamic request so essentially what we have is we know this is the beginning of the list let's call this the header and then once you go to the beginning of the list you will be able to find look at a field inside this block of memory and find where you're supposed to go next so it's sort of like a pointer to the next location which is ff now from ff it tells you to go to bf and from bf it tells you to go to cf and the cf the next field will be point to this constant called null and that indicates the end of the list and it's very important to maintain null to make sure that the list will end in a valid way now let's talk about pointers large types what we mean by large type is sort of like a defining a struct which is sort of a packaging of data into one unit and let's suppose that we have a something called struct record now before I do the struct I type def a pointer to an int call using a name called int pointer so int point is really a int star it's another alias for int star and so I define three fields first is an int pointer second is an int pointer so they are both are pointers so these both are these both of these are pointers and then I have a third field called uh, data which is an integer so when you think about this you can think of sort of a package where you have first and then you have second and then you have data and so what we need is sort of like a pointer to this so that we can work with uh, allocating and deallocating memory and passing these things these structs into functions so allocating memory for this pointer would be done like this so if I want to allocate memory for this pointer so what I need to do is to first of all define uh, struct record pointer and then I would allocate memory for to hold a struct record notice it's very important that we say struct record because the struct record requires enough memory four bytes here and four bytes here and four bytes here so we need to allocate 12 bytes of memory to hold uh, this uh, to, to, to in the memory and then pointer would be pointing to that so whenever you allocate memory for a struct you would say alloc struct whatever the struct you want to allocate to and then make sure that is initialized to a pointer to that struct because alloc always returns an address now let me ask you this question now what is the difference between alloc type def struct record oops that shouldn't be type def here so let's just say that we have alloc struct record and alloc struct record star now this would allocate 12 bytes of memory and this would allocate 4 bytes of memory now do we see why because this is just a pointer so the compiler will allocate only 4 bytes of memory 
In here, the compiler will allocate only 12 bytes of memory. And so it's very important that you, when you allocate memory, you alloc allocate sufficient memory to hold the structure like this. Now, this is probably not the right way to do things because all you're getting there is four bytes of memory and you could have some sort of a uh, runtime error if we uh, continue to use that. So this is the end of the, uh, the lecture on uh, pointers.